hopefully now you have the microvision IDE installed and I'm gonna go through the um, setup process to set up the the um, programmer to work with uh, this IDE and also give you a basic uh, rundown on how to start a new project and I'm gonna go through this really quick because I do have a 10 minute uh, time limit on this um, little screen recording thing you're gonna come to project and you're gonna go, you're gonna go to new project um, call your project whatever you want to call it let's call this one test one then you're gonna get this menu where you're gonna search for your specific microcontroller. You can go to STM microcontrollers, microelectronics. Excuse me. We have the F1 series here. You go through here, you find your chip, or you can just come here STM 32F103C8. There you go. Just type it in there, and it pops right up. Press OK. You then this window is gonna pop up, which is the um, runtime environment. So you're gonna go to device um, startup is all you need and CMS's core. Uh, these are just some basic initialization code that's required to get the uh, you know it's going to set all the really low level things like fuses and whatnot. Now um, usually I change the names of these things to user application which is my application. Right click here, add group, right click on target, add group gives you a new folder. I changed this one to user libraries. That's where we're, we're going to store all the peripherals that we're going to write ourselves. User application, add existing, right click, add existing item to group, C file. This is where we're going to have our main file. Now you can call the actual file anything, but since it contains my main file, I like to call it main. So I know that this is where my main program is at. But again, you can call it whatever you want. Just make sure it's a C file integer add uh, add file will be cancelled file psh, it already exists okay it already exists because I I did a practice run of this video so I'm gonna have to call it something else um, I'll just call it Bob there you go there's Bob mm. okay now we want to build the target just because I want it to list all the dependencies here so I can view a certain file so build target obviously it gives an error but now that it's built it's showing me the dependencies that are right here and this specific file so you're gonna cop you're gonna just write the name this is your main okay or Bob or whatever include and you're gonna type the, this name right here of your your board in quotation marks stm32 f10 x dot h so now you've included uh, this file and all this does is it defines the, the address for all the registers in the microcontroller as well as some other important things. Now we could write this by hand, go through the data sheet, find out the address for all the rated, um, registers and then define them ourselves but that's really tedious because there are hundreds of them. There you see all that? Yep, we're not going to do that by hand. No. Okay. So now that uh, go back to your main. Um, now you can actually make your main. Now Kyle requires you to have. Um, you can't end right here. You have to have an empty line, right? Okay. Again, build your target. Now you see zero errors, zero warnings. However, let me check my time. Three minutes, okay. However, you don't, um, uh, you're not ready to upload it to your microcontroller yet because you have to configure the um, the uh, programming that you bought, the ST Link. So you're gonna go to the debug menu. This um, drop down menu, you're gonna come and you're gonna click on ST Link Debugger. Then go to settings. You're gonna change. Make sure the port right here on the debug trace says SW. Um, the speed doesn't really matter. Download to flash. Okay, highlight that. You're going to go to the trace option. Now, on your microcontroller, you should notice there's a crystal. It's 8 megahertz, not 10. Okie dokes. Uh, go to your flash download tab and click reset and run. Otherwise, you're going to have to manually reset it to run the new code on it every time you upload. So you don't want that. You want it to reset and run automatically. Your microcontroller, the um, 
CA T6 has 64 kilobytes of memory, not 128. So you're going to change this 2 to a 1. That's 64 kilobytes. And you're going to press OK. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, personally, me, I am. Oh, yeah. You go to your target tab. Change that also to 8. Go to make sure that uh I don't I think that's about it there's something else that I do but you don't have to I just do this because it's um personal preference I change it to C99 mode it allows certain things that are it's more forgiving for example um it really is I just I, I like it much better um so yeah so that's that it's the linker nothing there nothing there and this is debug mode, run to main, etc. Alright, so now that's that. Plug in my uh, programmer physically. There you go, it's plugged in. F7 to compile, F8 to upload. And pro erase done, erase the chips, programmed, verified, application is running. Boom, it's ready to go. That's all you need. Now, if you have any, um, let me see how much time I have. Six minutes. Um, I have four minutes left. If you have any errors where you weren't able to see certain things, you probably don't have the packs installed. So you're gonna go to Pack Installer, and um, here obviously it has all the packs for <laughs> numerous amounts of vendors for microcontrollers, at Mel, uh, Maxim, ST, Texas Instrument, etc. You're going to find the ST Microelectronics. I always call it microcontroller. You're going to come to the STM F103 series of devices where you're going to install the um, device support drivers and examples. You're going to click. See, mine's already up today because it's already installed. You're going to install that. You're going to install the ARM CMS's um, interface standard. You're going to install that. You're gonna go to the one that says Kyle um, ARM compiler. You're gonna install that and MDK middleware for devices. This is um, I think this has to do probably with uh, the peripheral drivers. So I don't know, but just install it. So it put and then once all that installs, then you'll have access to that was this one pack installer. But once that's installed, you'll have access to this, which will then will have the, the stuff that you need, such as the startup and the core. And that should be it. Again, um, sorry for rushing it, but I am on a clock here. There you go.